This is the last video of the series in which I have been able to show you many of the ceramics that I was fortunate to have been able to study at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York on a study tour I did way back in 1975. Many of the pieces are described simply as Staffordshire, as it is often difficult to pinpoint exactly where they were made. The Staffordshire Potteries encompasses about six towns, Burslem, Fenton, Hanley, Longton, Stoke and Tunstall in England, which became a centre of ceramic production in the early 17th century due to the local availability of clay, salt, lead and coal. This sculptured piece is called a pew group, although they are actually sitting on a settle. They originate from the Staffordshire Potteries about 1740 to 1750 and are in salt glazed stoneware. They are entirely hand built using coils, impressed and reticulated decorative techniques. Certain elements like the faces and the dog are highlighted in black but I'm not sure of the significance of the black faces. And in contrast is this arbor group, lovers sitting together in an arbor. Once again, handmade, but in lead glazed earthenware. It has been decorated by applying clear green and brown transparent glazes and is loosely termed wheeldenware. Here are three lovely pieces from the Bow porcelain factory. During its short life, the Bow factory produced many wares in soft paste porcelain. The paste contained bone ash and was fired at a low temperature. The bone ash resulted in the translucency of the wares and was a precursor to bone china. This dish is known as powder blue. Before the bisque firing, Cut out tissue paper was laid on the plate, which was then sponged with cobalt oxide. The paper was removed to leave the white reserves in which were then painted the Chinese inspired scenes. The plate was then bisque fired, glazed and fired again. Bo also decorated their porcelain with designs derived from Japanese porcelain of the period, as in the butter tub, which bears an appealing kakiimon quail pattern decoration. On the right is a moulded seashell form for salt or sweetmeats, about 1750, simply decorated in underglazed cobalt blue. Here are more examples of bow porcelain. They are again decorated with the kakeimon inspired designs. The unusual octagonal cup and saucer contrasts with the leaf dish on the right. Another prominent English porcelain manufactory which produced soft paste porcelains was the Chelsea Works which operated from about 1743 to 1770. These vases with covers are encrusted with hundreds of small florets and a berry and leaf overlay. This decoration must have taken hours to complete. My colour slide is very dark, but they are in fact quite white, as in this photograph from the Met collection itself. This delightful pair of candlesticks also comes from the Chelsea factory. They are made of soft paste porcelain, hand built on Rococo form bases. The one on the left is a menacing looking leopard and the one on the right is a boar and both are being attacked by hounds. Behind them is a bocage of leaves and berries and leaf encrusted receptacles hold the candles. This lovely trio is also Chelsea Derby, 
about 1760 and it is in soft paste porcelain. The fluted teapot is quite rare. It is decorated in green enamel and gilding. Also Worcester of the same period and also decorated by James Giles is this gorgeous Monteith. A Monteith is a large bowl with a scalloped rim designed so that six or eight wine glasses may be suspended by the foot inside the bowl to be chilled in iced water. This one is coloured with apple green underglaze and the reserve with its gilded surrounds demonstrates the superb painting skills of the James Giles workshop. These two beautiful covered two-handle cups are from the French Sèvres porcelain manufactory. Sèvres initially made soft paste porcelains but from 1770 began to make their wares in hard paste or true porcelain after discovering the secret which was simply the use of kaolin and felspar for the body of the porcelain and the high glaze firing temperature of over 1280 degrees centigrade. These pieces exhibit the high standard of Sèvres workmanship and decoration as can also be seen in the next setting. which is highly gilded and exquisitely decorated with enameled scenes. It is hard paste porcelain and dated about 1840. Can you imagine the time, the effort and the skill required to produce this magnificent tea and coffee setting with each piece double walled the outer wall being meticulously reticulated. It was executed by a hyacinth Renier who specialised in this technique. Luster ware is a type of pottery with a metallic glaze that gives the effect of iridescence. The technique of lustreware on pottery was first developed in Mesopotamia in the early 9th century. It is produced using metallic oxides, mainly copper and silver. They are painted over the once glazed fire pot and then given a second firing at a slightly lower temperature in a heavily reduced or smoky kiln atmosphere which excludes oxygen, resulting in the lustre effect. These jugs all come from the Sunderland area where several potteries produce this type of ware. They are early 19th century. These jugs exhibit the several kinds of decorative techniques which were applied to lustre ware. Many of this type of jug were made at various Staffordshire potteries. They were called commemorative wares as they usually commemorated some particular person or event happening at the time. The scenes were transfer printed but sometimes hand painted. The jug on the left is about winter and the one on the right in red transfer print says something about John Bull. I made several reproductions of these jugs for old Sydney town. Here's one of them. These three delightful pieces are Dutch Delft of the late 18th century. Cows were popular, sculptured or made into creamers, or as seen here, forming the handle for a pot lid. Made in earthenware, they are highly and colourfully decorated with some gilding over a white tin glaze. Also from the Delft pottery is this elaborate cruet set of oil and vinegar 
lidded and handled bottles with a hand-painted polychrome decoration of blue, iron red and yellow. It is tin glazed earthenware. Here we are looking at a bird whistle. A big bird flanked by two little ones sitting on a branch. It is in Wealdon style about 1790 with the applied runny glaze decorations. You blow the tail of the big bird to make the whistle. Many of these novelty items were made in pottery and here is another one in earthenware with simple underglaze decoration. You can clearly see where the whistle is cut in the tail of this bird and by tapping the hole in the neck you can create a warbling sound. Made in Staffordshire about the same period. A fine quality Staffordshire pearlware piece of rare form and colour. This small tureen is moulded in the form of a bird on his nest with an opening for the ladle under the tail. The moulded nest forms the bottom of the tureen. It is dated about 1820. Pearlware is another name for the bright white earthenware clay bodies of that period. A lead glazed earthenware chamber candlestick is decorated in underglazed colours of blue, yellow, brown and purple. The basic form is moulded with an applied handle. The gorgeous coffee pot is salt glazed and beautifully enamelled with the scale pattern at the top and a scene below in red enamels. The jug is Blackfield glazed earthenware and so is the teapot which also has a delightful floral decoration applied in white enamel. The enamel decoration is done on the once fired black glaze and refired at a lower temperature of up to 800 degrees centigrade to fix the enamel on the glazed pot. Here are two splendid examples of Palissy ware but described as in the manner of French potter Bernard Palissy who lived from 1510 to 1589. Palissy specialised in this kind of rustic ware, heavily ornate and encrusted with all manner of interesting relief decoration. His style was much copied during the 19th century, which is the date of this piece. It is lead glazed earthenware and the back of this dish has also been glazed in a most interesting manner. Here we have another lovely puzzle jug, which I talked about in a previous video. This one is Staffordshire about 1790 and is salt glazed and the floral decorations are beautifully painted in on glaze enamels. These two moulded mugs are by Potter Ralph Wood the Younger from Burslem in Staffordshire. The one on the left bears the words success to Lord Rodney and the one on the right is very bacchanalian in its conception. They are lead glazed earthenware with underglazed colours and dated about 1782. This charming piece of English tin glazed earthenware is conveniently dated 1736 and is a cradle made to commemorate the birth of the child whose initials are MT. The decoration in cobalt blue is Chinese inspired. This beautifully hand painted ship adorns the side of a large punch bowl from one of the Staffordshire factories about 1795. 
The very decorative moulded face wall pocket is plain undecorated white glazed stoneware and on the right is a salt glazed stoneware pastry mould. Most of these pieces are about 1755. The final contribution to this video is this absolutely delightful sculpture of a kitten on its back on a cushion with a strand of wool in its mouth. I believe the object is a wool container. It is Majolica ware and was produced in the Minton Pottery in the late 19th century. The English term Majolica indicates that the piece was decorated in coloured glazes. Thank you so much for watching this video.